And one of those is Masani Kaba, a super senior returning for her fifth year. She joins us now. Masani, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, what has it been like to have a team that all five starters back from last year to start that off season with the groove that you guys have together? What's this off season been like for you? Um, I feel like it's been great, you know, to have five starters return this season. Uh, you know, last year was kind of difficult with COVID, you know, we came in, you know, everybody's still worried about stuff, a lot of, you know, problems, you know, mental issues. But I feel like this year we're going to go off with a great start and, you know, can't wait to play. Last year we watched the video of you guys finding out you made the NCAA tournament. What do you guys need to do this year to go deeper in March Madness? Um, I feel like we all just need to you know, bring our A game, uh, listen to our coaches, uh, follow Coach Abe's game plan. Um, she's a great coach. Uh, she knows what she's talking about, and if we follow her plan, I think we'll make it pretty far this year. Hey, Masnig, Brooke Weisbrod in the studio. Um, I also love that NIL has now become a part of the college basketball conversation. You guys were the first women's team to be sponsored by College Hunks. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how exciting it is to be a part of an NIL deal? I mean, I think the NI deal in general is just great, you know, for athletes, you know, to have a way to, you know, make some more money. But um, Rebecca Ripley actually brought up the idea to all of us and was all like, oh, hey, that sounds like a great idea. So for her to, you know, give us our first NIL deal, you know, especially as a team, it was great. And I really appreciate it. Messany, Mike O'Donnell here in studio. Uh, wanted to ask you, I'm setting you up for failure here, if you're ready, is with Coach Abe. She's got a fiery personality on the court. With all the talent you, you all have coming back, expectations are high. Has she relaxed a little bit on the practice court or no? Never. She never relaxes. Um, <laughs> the is always fiery. Um, you know, she gets a good start on us. She wants us to always, you know, be ready. So she's never going to relax on us. You guys are picked second in the preseason coaches poll behind your rivals at USF. What does that do for motivation for you? Um, that's a lot of motivation, you know. I feel like it's a great for us. Um, I consider us the underdogs, and I've always did. So being second isn't bad for me. It just, you know, gives us more motivation to go in there harder and stronger. Masani, we have some media questions through Zoom for you. Here's Tom. All right, thanks, Chris. Uh, reminder to our media folks, uh, if you want to ask a question, please use the uh, raise hand feature in the chat. Uh, our first question will be from Eric Lopez at the uh, Black and Gold Banner Act. Mas, uh, once you knew you were coming back, I'm curious, what have you been working on this off season to, uh, for you, in your own game? Um, you know, just pretty much evolving as a player, you know, um, you know, stretching myself out a little bit, be the real stretch for that I should be. Um, but that's really about what I've been working on in the off season. All right, our next question will be from uh, Leonardo Torres of NS NSM Today. Oh, by uh, Leonardo, I think you're uh, muted. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. yes. Oh, hi. Well, I was going to say, so what has your coach been stressing for you guys the most in practice you, as you, for, you, for you? As a team or just me? Uh, I would say as a team overall, and as for you also. I mean, the same thing. Uh, you know, in the past, we've been a great defensive team. You know, she's always going to stress defense. Defense is first in Coach Abe's um, coaching plan. But um, we've also been working on a lot of offense as well. So I think, you know, just bringing the two to the court is going to be something to see. Our next question will be uh, from Jason D uh, with the Orlando Sentinel. Massonet, when you look at this team, you know, so many returning starters, it's similar to the men's team. Um, you know, is, is building chemistry difficult at all? Is that something that's even come across your mind? Or are you guys just playing your game the way you want to? Um, I feel like a lot of the building of the chemistry happened last season. But this season, I feel like we've built that chemistry. Um, you'll be able to tell on the court. Um, I feel like in practices, we play really well with each other, and it's starting to show. So I think the chemistry is going to be there for sure this year. Go. I will go for a follow-up for uh, Eric Lopez. 
Moss, with the experience last year, getting to the championship game, making the NCAA tournament, how does that experience help this group with every, pretty much everybody coming back this year? And is there a sense of unfinished business from this group? Um, yeah, I would say we have some unfinished business, but, you know, with them coming back and for those who've never been to a championship game before, they got to experience that. So it was just, you know, a lesson learned and we're ready to go back. Thank you so much, Moss and Ikaba. Looking forward to watching you guys tip off the season here shortly. Thank you. Well, we are about to hear from Coach Abe in just a second, but one of the things that I love about her players is like that same energy that Coach Abe has, I'll the rest of her go. players have. <laughs> right? It's like this, this chip on their shoulder. You can feel it, and they're like, yeah, all right. Go ahead and pick a second. We'll show you what's up at the end of the season. So I, I like that. It's this quiet confidence about this team. What did you like that you heard from Mossini? Well, I think they know where they're at, right? They, they know the expectations are real and they're big. But because of the fact that chemistry is there and they won at a very high level last season, the confidence is there not just to understand who they are, but the confidence is there is that they've got unfinished business. Mm -hmm. So you've got that unfinished business kind of mentality and the confidence of understanding who you are, that's a really cool combination of a mental attitude moving forward through the season. Well, here's our American reporter, Morgan Uber, with fun fact on UCF defensive play. Since Katie Abrahamson Henderson took over as head coach at UCF in 2016, the Golden Knights have ranked number one or two in the American in scoring defense. Last season, though, UCF took a huge step in becoming the number one scoring defense in the nation. The Golden Knights allowed just 50 and a half points per game. Great news for the Knights, but not so great for opposing offenses. UCF returns all five starters, plus their first five off the bench. Thank you so much, Morgan. I want to talk real fast about the X's and O's when uh, of a UCF versus USF. Where, what, what is the game difference between the two of them? Well, I think what we saw with South Florida, their style is, you know, it's threes, it's running up and down the floor. You know, with UCF, you see a lot more half-court offense, and, and their defense is just, it's a lot more physical. You know, they love to make contact and make you uncomfortable. And that's one of the things that you really enjoy about watching them play. And that's what, you know, Coach Abe instills in her players is like, go seek it because we're not afraid of contact with anybody. Where do they need to um, not improve because they have everyone back, but where do you see on defense kind of some areas for them to kind of push a little bit further? Not just I'm talking about against USF, but to go a little bit further in March Madness this year. I think you're just limiting second shots. Uh, my favorite UCF women's basketball defense is when they're in full denial mode, especially in the full court. I think they're extremely disruptive. You talked about the physicality, but they also have speed as well. And when you, if you can get out in transition and get easier buckets that way, I think the biggest improvement is in the half-court half offense. offense. Their There's sets, their continuity. Their defense is so good, so aggressive, so physical. You get out in easy buckets in transition. For example, Tay Sanders, 50% of her scoring comes in transition. The next evolution of her game and UCF's game is finding consistent uh, offense in the half court when things slow down and you're, you're not able to get something easy in transition. Well, it's joining us now, head coach Katie Abraham Henderson. Coach Abe, thank you so much for joining us. We're getting excited to watch your girls play this season. What has been the biggest focus so far for you guys as you start fall practice? Uh, I think um, uh, Mike just kind of said it. We're really working on our uh, half-court offense and just trying to, um, you know, find more shots from different people besides Mossini and and uh, Brett and uh, Diamond and try to try to just have everybody be scorers. This year is so unique with the extra year that players are given. You get all five of your returning starters back. For, for you, I mean, what is that like as a coach, knowing exactly what you have on your plate? You know, I think I'm just so excited. I, I never wanted to lose our seniors. And, you know, when it came back that they were all coming back, we all of our coaches, we really got excited. And we obviously we asked them first if that's something they want to do because, you know, two of them definitely want to play after 
um, their seasons here, but when they said they were coming back, we were super excited because number one, we love them as human beings and they're like family to us and we never want to lose them. Number two, they're going to get their master's degrees. All of them are, uh, have started their master's degrees. That's super important to me and my staff that education has always been first. So they, they get to start their master's degrees. And I think, um, two of them, three, uh, well, two of them for sure is they're going to finish their master's degree by the time they graduate next year. And then obviously basketball wise, I mean, you know, we got two of them that are starters and they played tons of minutes. So that just really helps our team. Hey, Coach A, Brooke Weisbrot in the studio. You know, I think that's such a testament to the program that you and your staff have built, that players want to come back. And, and mm -hmm. having a senior strong, driven team is so important. And coming out of the NCAA tournament last year, you know, one of the great things that we saw was women feeling way more empowered to use their voice. You know, you as a mm -hmm. coach, as a women's coach, is definitely a great example of that. But how have you empowered your young ladies to use their voice? You know, I, I just, every day, I mean, we, we're a very diverse team. We're, you know, everybody's different. Um, but we, we talk about that every day. I want them to not leave this place um, with every tool necessary to be able to be successful in life. It's not just basketball. I mean, I, I think all college coaches, we want to win and we want to coach basketball. But here at UCF and just my staff in general, I mean, I've no matter where I've been, my staff has been with me. Well, three of them played for me and the other two have been me with quite some time and you know my staff and I were all about empowering women it's not just me and um, and so I think when you have strong individuals like myself and my staff you know our players have great role models we're all different my whole staff is different I'm different but we have just a great uh, group of uh, players and and my staff members especially that just know how to empower women and we're and each of my players can look up to each of us in all different sorts of way and um, I think that's really important to women because when I was growing up we didn't have a lot of great role models I mean I didn't I couldn't watch people on TV I didn't have you know you know a whole female staff where I could look up to people I mean I have two staff members that you know have children and obviously I have children and are married I have two staff members that are not and they're independent and they're strong women so like whatever our players want to be um, they have a lot of people on my staff and around them that they can look up to and ask for advice so I just think that's something that's always been around just me personally as a head coach but it, it has to do with my assistants too they're they're really strong empowered women and I think our players are very fortunate to have them Coach Mike O'Donnell here in studio. Uh, two years ago, um, I had a chance to watch practice a few times. Last year, mm -hmm. unfortunately, I didn't. But when I walk out of your practice, I'm usually motivated to change the world and run through a brick wall. <laughs> and I'm wondering, okay. for your team this season, most people assume that hey, you got all five stars back. Let's just roll the ball out and have a good practice. How have yeah. your, uh, your team uh, really kind of set you up during practice? And how's, it, how's the motivation been? Well, it's been great because we still have Mossini back. And, you know, um, Mossini actually left for about three weeks to go play with the national team, and she was gone. And we really missed her presence. You know, I mean, she does so many intangibles for us. And uh, I think this is going to be a really big basketball year for her also. But the intangibles she brings every single day to practice, I mean, as a captain, as a leader, um, I think it's been uh, truly a blessing that she was gone for a little bit. And we had to train some other people how to step up like Moss does you know, every single day in practice. Uh, I actually sent them a quote yesterday about if your best players are your harder, hardest workers on your team every single day, you're going to have a championship program in, in just in general. And uh, she's like the epitome of it. I mean, she's, she's our, our hardest worker every single day in practice. She comes prepare every single day in practice. Then she gives to our players. And then, you know, Tay Saunders now a captain, and she's one of our hardest workers. And Diamond Battles is a captain for us and she's one of our hardest workers so I got three of them you know every single day and so for us as coaches and most coaches know this if you have some great leaders on your team then every day when I come into practice I'm like hey, what, this is great Moss has got them Diamond's got them Tay's got them you know I don't I don't have to train anymore and so it's really a blessing that we have um, all three of them back makes your job easy we have some media questions via zoom Tom is going to take that away for us all right, thanks, Chris. Our uh, first question will be from Eric Lopez at the Black and Gold Banneret. 
Coach, good to talk to you again. I want to ask you about your schedule, an incredible schedule. You've got Tennessee coming to your place. Arkansas is coming to your place. I know you're going to Iowa back home for you. It's a very good <laughs> Iowa team there. you got you're going yeah. to Virginia. Just talk about your schedule uh, and the non-conference schedule in particular, the unbelievable schedule, especially having teams coming to your place too, showing the respect to your program's game. Yeah. Who made that schedule? I didn't make that schedule. No. Um, you know, I just think it's, you know, when we have our league meetings, we talk about, um, you know, making sure that our RPI now net is really high because I think it's super important for our conference and all of our conference coaches. We really want to get, you know, if we can, four teams in t um, to the tournament. And so that's something we talk have been talking about for five years since I've been here. And um, so, you know, we really took that to heart. And obviously now that we are a seasoned team, then we, we really want bigger challenges. And I know our, our, especially our seniors and our upperclassmen, they really want bigger challenges. And to play in this league and to get to, you know, the conference tournament or be at the top of the league, you have to schedule up in the preseason in order to compete in the season. So um, we've just really tried to schedule a little differently. Um, obviously, the SEC American um, um, challenge that really helps us um, because we played last year against LSU and this year we're obviously playing against Arkansas at home but the other teams we've scheduled and um, you know we got lucky that Tennessee said yes because it's been really hard to schedule I mean we we've said we would go places and then you know people don't want to play us or um, you know they just they just maybe would prefer to come to Orlando and play so you know, we got um, some really good games coming in. Super excited, and um, our players really want that challenge. All right, our next question will be from Leo Torres with uh, NSM Today. Hey, Coach. Uh, so you have returned five starters. I just wanted to know, is there a player that you've seen so far in practice that maybe their progress has surprised you, that you didn't maybe see coming? I uh, didn't see coming. I would hope everything would I would see coming, but you know I think that it's a it's a it's a collection of people. Um, you know, I I would have to say Destiny Thomas. Um, I think she really turned it on at the end of the year last year. Uh, you kind of saw her in the um, conference tournament championship and just when we played USF here. I mean, she is a unstoppable rebounder and. She's really has a college body now, and she's really uh, developed, really. I mean, just every part of her, physically, mentally, everything. And I'm a big believer if you're physically fit, you're mentally tough. And she's there now, you know. And now, actually, she has an extra year. So she's a junior, really, um, coming in playing-wise. But I would have to say on our team, like every day in practice, I'm like, whoa. Like, whatever team I put her on, nobody's boxing around. I'm like, you know, I, I'm like, we got to box that. We got to box Destiny out. But also Destiny's looking to score more, too. Um, and it's really cool from to, for my team to see that because, you know, our upperclassmen like Mossney and Diamond and Tay and Alicia Lewis and Brittany Smith, they're, they're super pumped about it. You know, they're like, yes, Destiny. Like, they all know that that, that her coming better this year is going to even make us better. And then you know, even the, the 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 newcomers we have this year, we have two newcomers and two freshmen. The newcomers are going to really help us. All right, the next uh, question will come from uh, Jason Beatty at the Orlando Sentinel. Coach, you just mentioned a couple of newcomers and the younger freshmen. For such having a veteran team returning all five starters, how helpful is that for those newcomers and the younger players? Well, I think the newcomers are really going to step in. I think the newcomers have a lot of experience. They're, they've they played at, um, at different Division One programs. I mean, I think coming in, I mean, that's kind of what happened with Alicia Lewis and Asia Todd last year when they came in. They were at different universities, so they're seasoned college players. So I think uh, that transfer portal is helpful for everybody in terms of when you get a transfer. They, they've they played in college. They've, they have a college body. You know, they, they, you know, they kind of know what to express, expect different from, them, from freshmen coming in. Our freshmen are super talented, but our newcomers coming in, they have the experience. And, you know, um, I don't I don't think you have to really push them into the pace of college athletics as much as you, you know, really have to do that with freshmen. Our freshmen are great. I'm not saying they're not. But our, our newcomers, you're going to probably see them a lot. Our last question will come from uh, Eric Lopez. Coach, uh, Tay Sanders obviously acknowledged by the preseason uh, first-team all-conference. Uh, discuss her 
how she's evolved as a player. She's a dynamic two-way player, among the best defensive players, and obviously her offense has come along with that. Discuss uh, Tay's growth. Well, I think this extra year is going to help her too because this is her third year with us, and obviously she she knows our system, and she's, she loves our system, and she loves the front of the press, and she doesn't want to give that up as much as uh, there's some other people now that can actually get up there, not just her and Diamond. But, um, you know, I think that uh, Mike said it. He said, you know, she gets a lot of her points off of those transition layups and everything. But this year she's really been working on her outside shot after the season ended this year, you know, because a lot of people – uh, don't really play they play off her completely so we've really been offensively w working on her to shoot because if she could shoot then she's going to be super dangerous she, she's going to get by you because she can get by you so I mean I think Tay's success has also come off the part of everybody has been doubling Brittany and Moss and so when you double Brittany and Moss we work on finding the next pass finding the next person finding the one more and Tay is could be weak side strong side and she's been able to, you know, capitalize on those double teams that are coming from Brittany and Moss. And so, you know, hopefully this year we can um, spread the floor out in terms of scoring where people can't double Brittany and Moss. And that's really going to open up Brittany and Moss a lot more, too. And they got double teamed a lot last year. So I think Tay's scoring c came in the half court because of that, because of the double teams also. So I just think we've been really working on offense to make everybody really dangerous so everybody can get... Um, points where the double teams can't come as much because those double teams, you know, we really worked on those last year a bunch with Brittany and Moss and where to kick it and how to kick it in, who to find and who to be, you know, ready to open and shoot. And so Tay's success has come a little bit from that too. Coach, a final question uh, from Chris in the studio. You mentioned some of the players that have dreams to play professional mm -hmm. basketball when their time is done. How did those conversations go with them, and how did you find out that they would be coming back for another year? Well, I mean, when, I, when they're freshmen, I, I have individual meetings with all of them, and we call them PIPs. We call them personal improvement plans, and we talk about their futures, and we don't just talk about basketball. We talk about what they're going to do the next 55 years of their lives. And, you know, I think they all come in saying they want to play. They want to play professionally. And um, as the years go on, I think that they know that they could go make a little bit of money playing if we can get them over there now that COVID is kind of settling down a little bit. But they can also have something to fall back on, you know. So we try to prepare them both ways. Um, you know, those conversations, I think, um, kept them here because of their master's degrees and I think they know and their parents it's not just coach Abe I mean their parents they they want them educated you know they want them some of them are going to be first uh, um, uh, kids in their families to get master's degrees you know and that's a big thing and we talk about that from day one when they come in is you know young women like let's if we can if we can pay for your school for free let's get that done like your master's degree you're going to leave college and have your master's degree like and and you're going to have no you know, bills to and student loans to pay off. Like that's big, you know. And and most people are like, oh, I don't want to stay in school that long. Well, now they're fifth year seniors, and they know one more year, one more year of college athletics, and you can get your master's degree, and you could probably play professionally. You know, that's something that we talk about from day one. And so I think, uh, especially um, Tay and Moss, you know, playing professionally is something they want to do. But they they have a plan after it's over. You know. Uh, what are you going to do the next 55 years of your life? They 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 know that they're going to go experience the world, see the world, have that opportunity in life to be able to do that. Um, and then when they're done with that, hopefully they'll save money doing that. You know, they could start their own business or they can, you know, get into the career they want to get into. And, you know, we're just going to support them in anything they do. So I think um, those conversations, to answer your question, Chris, really evolved over um, a four-year period, five-year period. Head coach Katie Abraham Henderson. Coach Abe, thank you so much for your time. Looking forward to watching your ladies play here soon. Thank you so much.